Oh my. <clears throat> We're here. Looks like I've started. Looks like I'm on. I didn't think I was actually started, but apparently I have. So uh, yes, now that, that has actually occurred, we'll, we'll actually do our sound check and make sure everything is working correctly. I've started early. Whoops. <laughs> so you will find the start time down in the description for those of you who want to skip past all of this. And uh, for those of you who are wondering how this works, I paint a Dungeons and Dragons miniature. Today I've said random. Um, for those of you, you probably won't find it that random, but it's something. I've picked something. And we're going to talk about uh, a few things revolving around Dungeons and Dragons at the same time. So I'll get started and uh, we'll go from there, shall we? Uh, by the way, I have opened up my doors and windows because it's far too hot for me to be painting today. But I'm doing it anyway because I felt like it. All right, let's start. Hi, welcome to How to D&D. My name is Fred Weller and today I'm going to paint a random Dungeons and Dragons miniature. Well, I'm probably going to paint a variety of Dungeons and Dragons miniatures. And while I'm doing that, because this is often what I tend to do on my channel, I'm going to talk about a few things regarding Dungeons and Dragons. And that's the Unearthed Arcana, Artificer and the Legend of Vox Mokata. Mokka. Mok Mokana. Mokana. Vox Mokana. I mean it. It's Critical Role's first season, right? So I thought I would have a chat about that sort of thing because I have to say it's a little bit unreal. Um, how many people actually see something like this happen? Well, it, well apparently we are going to get to see it. So the Legend of Vox Machina is basically the first season of Critical Role, the, the, the guys who do the live streaming, which is really popular amongst the Dungeons & Dragons community. In fact, it's, it's, it's kind of becoming more popular even outside of the Dungeons & Dragons community. And they did a Kickstarter to try and get a cartoon made, and now they have, I think it's something like almost $7 million from the Kickstarter, that's US dollars, and that's almost $10 million New Zealand, uh, it's been put into the kitty to make these, it's not going to be just one cartoon, it's going to be a series of cartoons. Have to say, they haven't finished yet, they've still got plenty of time. So that's crazy news. Who was expecting that? Is there a chance somebody will actually say, guess what, we'll make a Dungeons and Dragons Legend of Vox Machina um, live movie? Who knows, we'll see what the cartoon does. And then, on top of that, Dungeons and Dragons Wizards of the Coast decided to drop the Unearthed Arcana and gave us more stuff on the Artificer. And that has been interesting because there's been like a whole lot of people around the world who play Dungeons and Dragons and particularly those who are players saying finally yay now I just got to get my Dungeon Master to agree to let me play this particular class in the Unearthed Arcana version and then there's probably a whole bunch of Dungeon Masters who are not really too concerned about it but I imagine there are a whole lot of Dungeon Masters all saying oh my god what are they trying to do and they're probably about to pass out and wondering about how they are going to try to explain the slippery slope to somebody else and blah 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 so yes there'll be a lot of people who are very happy and a lot of people who are just freaking out completely. But that's beside the point because we're going to paint a Dungeons and Dragons miniature. And I'm going to paint, now you guys might remember this, I painted this a while back. It's an Otiog. And I decided to make my own Otiog. So I'm going to paint this particular Otiog because chances are I'll only get through one colour. And that's nice and simple and I can chat along while I'm doing that. So that's always good, isn't it? <laughs> okay, so for those of you who haven't figured it out, um, I usually just sort of ramble. You are welcome to chat along with me. I am going to just uh, tidy up around the mouth. How's it going, Steve? Hi, Mason Knight, how's it going? Now, I'm going to have to really um, concentrate for this name. Ostravar, Ostravar the Brave. Good day to you, Ostravar. Hi, Joe, how's it going? The Carter videos, I haven't watched Vox Machina before. Well, um, it's uh, their first campaign. It's it's actually very, very well um, constructed. And because the, the guys are friends and because they are so good at what they do, it's very entertaining. Hi, Aaron. How's it going? So I thought while we were doing this, uh, we would chat about those particular topics because I didn't really have anything else better to do. And this is my day off, so I get to do whatever I feel like. So... For those of you who are wondering what's going on, I'm right now I'm shaking up some paint. This is the Citadel um, Avaland Sunset. I'm going to use Avaland Sunset and I'm also going to use this um, Dungeons and Dragons Army Painter paint uh, called the Osiog Brown. So I feel like they're close enough that I should be able to work it in. 
But yes, if you want to talk about those topics, let's talk about them. And I'm all for talking about Captain Marvel as well, because um, it's it's a Marvel movie, right? We always tend to sort of want to talk about those sorts of things. Pop culture. I'm going to go and see Captain Marvel today, and I'll make my assessments and decision about whether I liked the movie or didn't like the movie. There's been so much press around it right now. I find it interesting. Yes, what's that there? Um, Ostravar. Ostravar. Hopefully I've got your name right. Ostrava the Brave. I'm actually about to start playing the new Artificer soon uh, in the Dungeon of the Mad Mage. I hope it's fun. Yeah, well, I imagine that um, the fact that you can now, provided you can get high enough, you can actually make magic items. Um, its features are kind of frightening. And the whole concept behind Dungeons and Dragons has always been sort of, um, you know, magic and so forth. And magic items have always played a part. Now we have what looks like a, uh, a class that is capable of, and that's been, been around before, it's not a first time, capable of making not just little things, but quite powerful and larger items that are magical in nature, and that's at sort of, you know, around about 8th level, or uh, I think there's a few things that are, I didn't t pay attention to all of it, but I, I understood the ramifications of what was going on. Card of videos. I actually started season two before watching season one. Well, oh, it's fine. It's always good. Whatever works for you, eh? I mean, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. You don't have to watch things in a particular order. It's always fine to just watch them in the order that works for you. I have been watching it myself, but that's because um, while I'm watching it, I'm usually working, and uh, when I'm needing to do thumbnails for the channel, I tend to sort of uh, work work my way through um, Critical Role and a lot of the other YouTube channels and their videos, uh, Metatata, stuff like that, I, uh, I'll watch somebody else's content. So I'm just painting this underneath, it's going to be hard to get at, so this is going to be a lot of fun, just trying to coat it. Oh, I need some advice for anybody who's really good at painting on how to remove primer from a resin model, because I've done a completely stupid thing. And I, I mean, it's happened to me before, but this is a miniature that I do not want to have come out um, looking like Toad's um, backside. So um, if you have some advice, um, that would be awesome. Otherwise, I'll have to Google it and figure it out that way. Wizard033, how's it going, Wizard? So let's talk about the legend of Vox Machina um, while people are jumping into the room. Who was actually surprised that... Uh, the, the critters and people would give, well, thousands, millions of dollars to the Critical Role team to make a, basically a cartoon on their first campaign. I'm actually not surprised at all. Why would you be surprised? They have been doing so well, and there doesn't seem to be very much that can stop them right now, so this certainly didn't seem like one that would stop them. Their, their stretch goal, their, their aim, was, you know, was pretty timid in comparison to what they've now got. That's a lot of money. It's the sort of thing that sort of suggests to you that uh, one day when you go to look uh, or watch those uh, Saturday um, or Sunday cartoons, whichever day you have cartoons on in your country, or whether it's cartoons at a particular time of the day, and who knows, kids' cartoons. It's not really a kids' cartoon. Um, their content is very adult in nature, so I find this kind of interesting. It's I feel like it's more um, uh, anime or manga in many respects, rather than being a, a kid's uh, cartoon you watch on the on the weekend or uh, in the early morning. So no doubt we'll see this. Now, if it does well, I, I'm not kidding. I reckon that somebody will try to pick them up and try and make a live action movie. Um, and who, who would support something like that? I think Hasbro would. I think Hasbro would approach them and say, look, we were planning on doing this anyway. Why not uh, use your, um, your franchise that's got a good following? People are interested in it. You had enough people interested enough to actually fund the thing. And there's, what, 50,000 backers for that, cam um, for that uh, Kickstarter, which means that out of those 50,000, they must have been giving them more than, like, a dollar or two dollars or ten dollars it's going to be thousands of dollars um, changing hands to make that possible to get s almost seven million US dollars that's a lot of money that's a huge amount of money 
Uh, Aaron, you're not surprised? Not surprised that creditors are a wonderful communi community, almost as good as yours, Fred. What do you know? Oh, look, that's nice of you to say, but um, I think the creditors community is, um, is certainly vastly more impressive than what I could ever um, produce. I'm not really trying to compete with them. It's, um, I, I always make, makes me laugh when people try to do uh, live stream games and think that they're going to be able to compete with uh, the critical role team. Because these guys know each other so well, they know each other in, in and out, they spend time with each other outside of Dungeons and Dragons, they know each other in the business, um, hence their ability to it, you know, stick together and, and keep, it, uh, keep it going is going to be so much better than anybody else. I mean, I'm just thinking about it, my game cancelled and um, yesterday, we didn't go out and do something else. Um, it was like a oh no, it's a bit. Well, I'm a bit tired. We'll just we'll just leave it. We'll come back to it next week, you know. Um, and and that's fine because you know a lot of uh, in particular myself, but a lot of us have got long distances to travel to make that happen. Distance isn't always a big issue, right? But anyway, they are in a pretty impressive community. So that that means that a lot of money is taken. Uh, changed hands with 50,000 backers and almost seven million dollars uh, What's that? Um, the brave I'm just gonna call you the the brave it's gonna be a lot easier for me and if you don't um, Appreciate it you let me know uh, I'm new to painting, but I have uh, heard about something about stripping a mini and starting over Yes, there are lots of advice on how to do that. You have to be careful about the the type of uh, compounds you use depending on what you're trying to strip it off Stripping um, paint off a metal lead figure is uh, probably going to do a lot less damage to the miniature, but things that are made out of resin and plastic are going to be tricky. Um, so hence I want to do it in a way that isn't going to cause a lot of damage if I can help it. But I am sure that one of the uh, the painting experts will jump in and they will help me out uh, given a little bit of time, or I will find it on YouTube. It's that That's what it's there for, right, is to find what you need, use what you need, and go from there. I I will be doing a wash on this. I know everybody's like, oh, Fred, it just looks like you're painting on a color. Yeah, I am. I am. I'm painting just a color on. Is it? Is it not? Is it not obvious? I thought it was, but yeah, I am. I'm painting this color on, and then I'll go from there. <laughs> and we'll just wiggle it around a little bit. I'm being. I'm pretty being pretty brutal. I'm not really getting too carried away with this. I'm just going to get the paint on and then move on to something else. Um, the Brave, they said they wanted to make it a cartoon for adults. Yeah, and, and I guess um, this is the area that is going to probably be the only part that will that'll slow them down in, their, in the process. Um, to be fair, if it, was, if it was a cartoon designed for kids, it would look a lot more like the original Dungeons & Dragons cartoon that we watched many, many years ago, and you can still watch. If you feel like in fact I think I've got copies of, of the DVDs sitting around in my book uh, case somewhere um, so yeah you could could follow up and watch those um, but I think it's going it's going to be because it's a cartoon it's going to tend to sort of look like it's something that appeals to an audience of kids and it's not necessarily going to be designed for that because a lot of the themes are very adult but I'm sure someone will take the the leap and say well we can do we can do both um, maybe not with the cartoon but if they ever get to a point where somebody says well we're doing a live action movie now and um, I honestly think the day will come where they'll wind up with an, a live action movie as well the artificer we're gonna have a chat about the artificer as well at some point I'm just gonna work my way through the um, comments though um, Aaron, I had a, a live stream, but uh, knew we uh, would never be that quality. But it was fun to give it a go. Yeah, uh, you know, I'm I'm starting to understand more about what's going on in YouTube, and that is, it's going to be there doing its thing, and um, YouTube has to be fun for me. So I'm going to just do my stuff. I'm not going to worry about all the other things. I am tidying up the channel a little bit. I'm sort of tidying up some of the thumbnails because they look a little bit ratty. And I'm rearranging things a little bit. But I do that in my time when I get an opportunity. Um, they've got a team of people working on their channel. So that makes a big difference. And not to mention, you know, they 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 are really good at what they do. So it makes perfect sense that they would be doing well. 
And I, I don't think that, um, you know, even even the likes of uh, Matthew Col- um, Colville, uh, who who had a Kickstarter not so long ago to make um, um, Strongholds and Followers, I believe it's called, a book. They're live streaming their games, but it hasn't really had the same following as the likes of Critical Role or even Acquisition Acquisitions Incorporated. They're a very different style of Dungeons and Dragons. They're sort of more performance art to a large extent. The only difference is the Critical Role team uh, know each other so well and are so versed in um, uh, the entertainment industry that what they do in their own personal time is that entertaining. I know there's a few people who believe it's all scripted. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. I suspect that it isn't scripted and uh, hence why sometimes the content that comes out is a little bit on the, the dodgy side and make people squirm a bit. Okay, just give me a second. I'm just going to load up with some more paint. Uh, I just need a drink of water too. That would help. Ah, nice. That was good. Um, uh, call me whatever. I don't really care. No problems. The Brave. I feel like The Brave is um, is better. The Brave. It sounds like somebody... It sounds, it sounds actually like a really important Indian... I'm getting an image of like having a spirit animal. Uh, this is a animal companion that you carry and um, head around with you at some point. Maybe a bear. I feel like a bear is a good idea. And the bear uh, entered battle with you, died because your dungeon master was being, you know, oh, I can't kill the characters, but I can definitely kill the animal animal companion. And it came back. It wasn't ready to die. It came back as a spirit animal. And uh, Guess what? You don't have to worry about uh, calling it back after a short rest. Yeah, just at the end of the encounter, you just roll up and do another one. Just use the same guy, use the same bear. Your animal companion's no longer um, material; it's corporeal. That's 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 the way to go. If you want your animal companion to survive, make it a spirit animal. <laughs> okay. Right, I'm uh, getting a little bit carried away. I do realise it's a little bit, a little bit funky. Um, Wizard, I think a version of that monster is uh, one of the D and D board games. Yes, that's right. I just showed you it. Um, I've been buying them all in order. I have Castle Ravenloft, uh, the Legend of Dritz so far, and I'm buying them one a week. Holy Toledo, well done, mate. Um, you're going to get a lot of miniatures. It's a lot of painting if you want them painted. But to be to be honest, I need to do another video on where to get cheap Dungeons and Dragons miniatures because um, the other ones are getting a little bit old, and every once in a while things do change, but you are right to do it the way you're doing it, it's going to save you a lot of money, and um, you get, you know what you're getting, because you know what's in the box, you're not, it's not a surprise, it's not like, I've got to work my way through the blind boxes, so yeah, it's a smart move, keep going with it, and of course the boxes are themed, so um, you, you're going to get pretty high quality miniatures whereas if you go onto onto eBay and other um, online purchasing um, systems there's a lot of knockoffs um, second factory seconds that are actually just uh, use the same mold but used inferior products and so they just fall apart or crumble or melt or they aren't pro- properly formed stuff like that um, Blanco's got a channel good for that you want to check him out we need to talk about um, the uh, Artificer, so we'll do that in a second. I'll just um, chuck on a bit more paint here in various places, and then we'll have a look at the chat. What have we got here? Aaron, whoa, whiz, that's got to be a good collection of minis. It will be, absolutely. I like uh, Matt Colville's stuff, but his, but he's not the de- Dungeon Master for me. Look, I don't think that every Dungeon Master is the Dungeon Master for even anybody. You know, everybody's got their particular way of doing things. Um, for example, I'm the kind of player who doesn't really care about magic items. And I, I, so I don't, I don't, you know, when people at the table start divvying up the magic items, they say, Fred, do you want this? This would be really good for your character. I'm like, I don't care. You take it. I really don't give a toss. Um, and I know other players who are very different about their approach to magic items. They're really important to them. Um, as a dungeon master, I tend to make a lot of my magic items um, that are found, uh, generally they are cursed or they've got 
strange and unusual features or they change and mod- uh, uh, the custom built for the, the player who picks it up or something like that or they're designed for a particular purpose so I don't often use a lot of the stuff that's directly out of the Dungeon Master's Guide now here is the thing that I want to just say with regard to the Artificer Dungeons and Dragons Dungeons and Dragons 5e is a, a game system that has prided itself on making magic items rare. And we now they haven't actually introduced it, so it's not done yet, it's still in playtest. But if they do introduce a class that is capable, and that's the expectation of the artificer that you're able to make magic items, if they do that, I do feel like they will lose a lot of the support that they have had from some people who have been very happy with the way that magic items have been approached. There are plenty of people who much prefer um, the Dungeons and Dragons um, 3.5 Pathfinder Dungeons and Dragons um, uh, 4e uh, concept of magic items where you have magic stores, you go and you spend your gold there and you can just trade in, trade out. Um, and it's it's more like a video game. But I can see this causing a few hassles um, because they're not finished. There's more content to be produ- and produced. So just because we've got the revised Artificer doesn't mean they're finished with what they're going to do. There's going to be more content. They are, Jeremy Crawford's already made it abundantly clear that they uh, created vastly more than they really needed to and they couldn't possibly try and get everybody to test everything all at once, so it's going to be released in, in bits and pieces, which I think is fine. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, actually. I think that's a smart way to go. Uh, oh, yes, Wiz, uh, w- w- Wizard 033. Next week is uh, Wrath of a Shardalon. Wrath of a Shardalon is uh, a box set, mostly very sort of generic stuff, for those of you who are wondering. So, yeah, if whatever you're picking up from there is going to be much more generic compared to what you're used to. Uh, from the other box sets, which is a good thing. You know, it's always good to have a bit of variety. Uh, what's this? Um, was it? I have about 150 vintage pewter and, and quite a few plastic already. Collection should be roughly 350 when I'm done. Whoa! Yep, Matt is good. Was absolutely. Yes, it, this is the problem with miniatures, isn't it? You get addicted to them very, very easily. Tiles are also fantastic. I'm not fond of tiles unless they're interlocking. If it's an interlocking system where um, you get a uh, basically a a tile that you can lock in like a jigsaw puzzle, I'm much happier with that. Uh, Devil, Devil Ham, Devil the Devil, um, Devil Ham, Devil the Ham, Devil the Ham, Devil the Ham. The new Artificer is better, but it needs another pass. Absolutely. I think that that has already been covered by more than a few people. They've already talked about the fact that they felt like it's it needs another pass to get it right. Um, a lot of people don't feel like it. the new Artificer is working particularly well with regard to Eberron. And that's really sort of where that... Uh, that class lives, you know, it's it's one of those, I mean, you could incorporate it into any of your games if that's what you want. Oh, listen to that little ball bearing roll, he's rocking around in my black paint. So I'm using the Vallejo, for those of you wondering, this is Vallejo Black. I don't know how I'm going to get past all the teeth that I created. When I was designing this uh, miniature and building it, I was not thinking about how I was going to paint it later on. What was I thinking? Painting will require space to get through? No. No, no, I wasn't thinking that. I should have been thinking, how will I paint it? So what I'm going to do is go black in here and try to jam the black in there as best I can. And then once I've done that, I'm then going to move on to the rest of the miniature and start applying some other details. Now, let's just, I'm going to water just down a fraction. Every time I water this stuff down, I always regret it. But I'm doing it anyway. <laughs> So what I did notice about the Artificer is that I actually like the idea of a a character that is more about making stuff, useful stuff, but not necessarily magical stuff, Um, particularly at lower level. I thought that was actually a really clever idea, and what I saw didn't really suggest that. I mean, there was a couple of different things, but most of it was about 
in viewing a item that is built or created with magical um, attributes, which is, I feel, less important. I mean, certainly there, there could be an option to that. Um, I feel like a lot of players would be much happier and quite content, and so would Dungeon Masters, with a class that allowed for, yes, the, um, the Dungeons & Dragons um, board games do have tiles that are interlocking with uh, jigsaw puzzle um, patterns to them, which is why don't throw them away, keep them, keep them. But I feel like if they had created a class which allowed you to build a character, the Artificer, and that character wasn't so much about making magical items, but more about making useful um, adventuring gear, there's a lot of different things. I've done a video not so long ago about, I think, um, inventions for Tinker Gnomes. And uh, we, we discussed a whole lots of different sort of possibilities that, uh, that weren't hugely powerful in terms of what they could do. So, so and, and not in terms of the magical aspect, but their utility function was massive. Is, I mean, I guess the question is, do you feel that the artificer should be magical in nature or should that it should not be? Okay, I've watered that paint down and that was a mistake. I won't be doing that again. I'm going to have to just ram my brush in there and do the best I can. Uh, Devil Ham. It needs a dedicated um, wand slinger subclass. There is a little bit of that going on. Not a huge amount, but there's a little bit going on. They did actually include some, some sort of options that looked very much like it was a uh, a wand slinger of types. It's not fully built out. I know what you're talking about. It's not it's not completely there, but there there was certainly some um, discussion around that And just add a bit more black to this paint and see if I can get the, uh, the, the black where I need it to be Because the water just watered it down way too much. I keep making that mistake every time It's either too much um, water or it just doesn't need it Okay, so let's get it in there and coat it and see if I can, can I see in the, in the mouth enough to be able to actually get the paint where I need it to be? <laughs> that's, that's a question. I know you guys can't see diddly squat because I'm struggling to see it, so um, I don't know how you would. But I need to get this area black before I move on, otherwise it's going to be impossible to deal with later on. I don't know how I'm going to deal with the tongue. I suppose I should deal with the tongue when, uh, when it's dried, but... Uh, Okay, all right, that's all good. All right, we'll get rid of, uh, well, should I paint the base black? I've got so much black already, and I don't really need to use it right now. It is too late, Fred. You had your opportunity, just live with it. So yeah, I'm, I'm still a little bit torn on the whole um, Artificer. And uh, I believe that um, Nerdaki, he's talked about uh, the Artificer a little bit. I really would have liked, as I said, to have seen the crafting rules be more around, you know, crafting mundane items that weren't magical. Um, and and um, given them, because really you, you only get a couple of, what, produce a bit of light, make a noise, or make a um, sort of a, 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 an illusion. So illusionary noise, or make a noise... Or um, a, a tiny illusion. It's sort of like, uh, and it, it's permanent, but it's not machine-like, is it? Um, so I, I, that's just my view, anyway. Uh, what's that, the brave? Uh, I think they want people to just use the crafting rules. That's in the Dungeon Master's Guide. Yes, exactly, and it will require a lot, and in Xanathar's Guide, I. I, and it's going to require a lot of interplay between your, the player and the Dungeon Master. So you're going to need to have a Dungeon Master who's really open to the idea of doing this. Otherwise, it's going to make it really difficult. Uh, since you can make wands like that too. Yeah. Well, can you imagine a game where you could make wands for spells? Particularly for attack spells. You could make utility spells a wand. Why not? Cure wounds, da 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 da. But then, what what is going to happen? I, I, I just I, I just I'm I'm really a little bit concerned about where they're going. I think what they'll do is they'll just try everything, and we won't really know what the final result is uh, for quite some time. 
but yes uh, okay so I'm putting another coat of this stuff on because I can see there are some areas that are not quite coated properly so I am whacking more paint on I should probably just move to the bigger brush why am I using a small brush this is foolish use the bigger brush cover it faster Fred cover it faster that's the way here we go easy peasies um, hi James how's it going what is, what is crawling on my ear is it something is it a bug is it a creature no no bugs please just look up make sure there's nothing crawling on the ceiling no nothing crawling on the ceiling awesome um, Casey how's it going the base should be um, turd brown okay I've got I've got some turd brown here we'll, uh, we'll we'll paint it turd brown I actually think that I need to do something with the base Rather than paint it, I actually need to give it some sort of terrain features or uh, make it a bit more interesting. Since it's a miniature that I made, I, can, I probably should actually get off my, my chuff and do something with this. I know a few people were expecting me to make an air elemental today. I was all ready to do it, and then I had a, um, like I couldn't decide whether I'd use tin foil, paper towels, string, corks, and in the end, I was like, no. I'm, I'm not ready for it. I'll come back to that. We'll, we'll do it another day. And I just want to, to chat and, uh, and paint uh, my miniature a funny colour. Um, this is like a vomit brown. Or is it a vomit yellow? It's like a vomit yellow brown colour. <laughs> Delicious. Mmm. Mmm. Tasty stuff. Um, Devil Ham. The crafting rules are too wobbly, wibbly wobbly. Um... Uh, the want, the want, the want a Kickstarter art artificer, but won't build out the rules to do it. A kick, oh, a kick, a kick butt artificer. Yes, I'll say that. Kick bot. I th I think the problem and and the concern is always when they add something new is the, they make it too good and then you wind up with everybody playing an artificer. Because it's a, it is still a caster, and it's still able to make magic items, and it's still a fighter. It's got armor proficiencies. It's got weapons it can use, you know. So it can do a lot of a lot of stuff. It's really going to come down to the play test and how people see it at working out at the table, I guess. I'm still always a bit concerned when they start adding um, new player options because I, I know there's always the you know the the feedback is going to be from those people who are interested in playtesting it. And it tends to be feedback, I would imagine, from people who are invested in seeing it stay and develop uh, a particular way. Anyway, more on that later. I just need a drink of water. David, how's it going? What's up, man? Yep, yeah, it's been a while. It has been a while. So I'm just painting miniatures. Sorry about that, I was trying to talk while I was trying to swallow water. Um, I'm just painting miniatures and we're talking about the Artificer and the legend of Vox Machina and the um, and their new cartoon that looks like it's definitely getting made. It's not a, uh, it's not somebody's imagination. It will happen. I, and more than likely I suspect we'll see a movie at some point. There's no stopping these guys. <laughs> And why should there be? Why should there be? Uh, okay, that's that brush and go in there. Just a little bit more of this colour and we'll move on to something else. Blah, 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 blah. Into there, into there. Coating it where I need to. Mm, underneath the creature. Need to do the rumpy bits. Wiggle it around a little bit. <clears throat> the Brave. I'll come back with feedback on my play test probably by the next stream. Oh, okay. I'll be interested. I feel like it is... Because um, when I first started uh, Dungeon Mastering... Dungeon Mastering, sorry. Um, Dungeons and Dragons 5e and it's... I, I did everything. I, I, let, I let magic items just go wild and... I think in the end, that campaign, I decided to end because I had released so many different things into the world and the, the group had become so powerful and they were only level 8. 
and they had all these magic items, of which I had sprinkled in a good portion of um, cursed stuff, uh, stuff that had uh, consequences they were not expecting, but I still ran into a whole bunch of uh, just issues with, you know, having to re rejig my encounters and making them harder. It wound up with every monster had to be readjusted in the monster manual just to keep up with them. Or I needed to have uh, more than one type of monster every single time, which is fine if you don't mind running uh, a more a game that's more like Dungeons and Dragons 4E, where you used, you know, every single battle had like uh, three or four different types of monsters, artillery, um, you know, brutes, uh, and various things like that. But I didn't really want to run that kind of game, so I, I ditched it. So um, I, I can just see if I wound, wind, wind up dungeon mastering, there's going to be somebody who's going to want to try out the, the Artificer from uh, Unearthed Arcana, particularly the, the revised one. Um, have you considered a 3D printer for your minis, mate? Um, actually, I haven't, and I, I kind of explained my rationale behind that. This whole, the whole pur purpose of me making miniatures, not so much painting them, but making them, is to help people get past the idea that they can't do it themselves, uh, particularly if they're in a country or location where they can't buy them, that they can't, you know, things like 3D printing is just not a possibility. You know, not everybody li lives in the USA or Canada or the UK. Um, not everybody has got access to those technologies that make it cheaper and easier to make that sort of stuff. So therefore, I feel like me sticking with just making making stuff this way is probably the best way to go. Because that was the whole purpose in the first place, was to help people get past the... Um, and because I'm, I'm foolish and silly, um, I am show no fear. I will do anything um, whatsoever, just about. Um, and I've pro proven that, right? I've done live stream uh, Dungeon Master... Uh, or not Dungeon Master, but um, Dungeons and Dragons 5e combat tutorials. No other channel has ever considered doing something like that because you make mistakes, it's hard to control, you can't edit it, and um, yeah, the whole concept is just like pretty scary. Um, how many channels do live uh, miniature making and painting? There's very, very few. There's, there's hardly anybody. It's becoming more... You're seeing more of it, but it's not that much. It's pretty It's pretty slim. So I feel like keeping the format for my miniatures as um, I just make them by hand out of tin foil and various other construction materials is probably the best way. Rather than using a 3D printer. That's just my view, David. Uh, the Brave. I'll come back with... Yep, we've got that already. So is there anybody who is... Excited for the new revised artificer? Or is there a dungeon master who is concerned? I'd kind of be interested, interesting to hear some people's views on, particularly if you're a dungeon master, your view on um, the new artificer revised. If you don't use Unearthed Dakana, I guess it has no bearing for you. But yeah, what is your view on that? I, I am more likely to use something like the artificer in an Eberron setting and less likely to use it in, a, in a, any other setting. That's just my view. Hi, Darren. You got no notification again. Yeah, I sent uh, a, a message to Creator Insider and said, could they please fix that, particularly for the live stream content? I know you would know the answer to this, Darren. So what is the best way to remove paint primer from a resin miniature without damaging it? Because I've made a bit of a blue-blue. Um, safely. I, I suspect you've done this many, many times before. So anybody got any advice on that? Throw it my way. Remember, resin's not the same as pewter or um, plastic. You do have to be careful. I, uh, my, that's my understanding. Alright, okay. That's working fine. We'll just give that a bit of a wash. Mamma mia, mamma mia. And is there anybody who is kind of um, excited or has anything to add in terms of the legend of Vox Machina? Uh, the new uh, Kickstarter, we're going to see a cartoon 
in 2020. What is your opinion? Um, Darren P. I've had good luck with Simple Green, Fred. Okay, Simple Green. I don't think Simple Green is something I can get in New Zealand. I will have a check. What, do, you, do you happen to know what the active ingredients in Simple Green are? Or is it one of those um, secret uh, secret ingredient? 12 secret uh, spices and herbs sort of thing. Because if I can't get Simple Green in New Zealand, it won't help me. And if I have to get it shipped to New Zealand, it'll probably be way too expensive. Uh, let's just grab some more of this paint. I'm just going to paint my way around the mouth. La da de de, ma 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 mi 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 mi. Let's put that over there. Has anybody seen the new Captain Marvel movie? I'm going to go and see that today. I am I am curious as to your opinion. Don't give me any spoilers. Just say whether you thought it was good or bad. Good or bad, and basically why. My understanding is so far. The, the difference between a, a good review and a bad review uh, seems to be that people feel the movie is a bit spotty, that certain, the, the beginning isn't quite as good as the middle, and, the, and the, they haven't really discussed the end so much, so that's interesting. Supposedly there's a twist in it, which is fine. There should always be some sort of twist. I find it interesting because... Um, you know, Captain Marvel started off as a, a male character. That's my understanding. I remember um, only seeing Captain Marvel as being a, a male character. Then it became a female character. Captain Marvel was never very popular as a male character. As far as I can tell, I don't really remember reading much of that comic book. Or even seeing that much of it. And then, um... Carol... Carol's story is really sad, so I feel like they need to have a very upbeat start to uh, Captain Marvel because it all goes downhill after that, if I remember right. <laughs> Things really get out of hand, so um, yeah. I guess that's part of the reason why I didn't really like her story because it was such a sad story. Once you read far enough ahead, that is. And are they going to do the same thing with the movie? Or will they decide to, to ditch it? Or will Captain Marvel only appear in, um, in movies where there's an ensemble, where there are other characters hanging around? Isn't it interesting how um, some characters and stories people gravitate towards? I feel like the... Social media has got far too much to play in terms of the success and failure of a movie rather than people going and just watching the movie and making the decision themselves. Um, because, you know, people were on the back of Captain Marvel before even Captain Marvel was released, which was just ridiculous. I was like, oh my God, seriously? That is just weird. And yet the lo likes of Vox Machina, uh, the legend, all you hear is positive, positive, positive. There's been very, very little negative. And those people who have not been particularly fond of um, the Critical Role um, team and what they do have not been, you know, hugely vocal about it. Um, they've, they've kind of, you know, they've, they've maybe mentioned it briefly and that's about it. They haven't said much more. But it... It... it Here's, here's the thing that I find really interesting about um, stories that become very public. Something like Critical Role, which is very much more in line with... Um, it's a game, right? It is a game. They're, they're playing out a game. So it's more uh, like a, a TV show. It's, 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 it's a series of short stories that are strung together into a big story. So it wouldn't make a particularly good movie in its current form. As a TV series, it's much more likely to be successful because of the way the game was played and the way it was delivered, right? Because it is not so much created for dramatic purpose. It's just that people have enjoyed the story um, and, and what was going on with it. 
But here's the thing. When you look at something like Critical Role and Vox Machina and the success that they are seeing, Marvel Studio has been doing really, really well. So when what happens when Marvel Studio doesn't do well? And there's a movie that actually doesn't do particularly well. It's going to come. And you could say, well, Captain Marvel is, is the beginning. Well, not everybody enjoyed every single movie that they have put out. Some people had differing views on uh, what they thought. You know, for me, um, Avengers um, Infinity War, it was an impressive movie. But could I say that it is a movie that I really wanted to have? To be fair, when I went and bought uh, a new Marvel movie, I actually bought um, Doctor Strange. I bought Doctor Strange. I didn't go and buy um, Avengers Infinity War. That's my view. Oh, there we are. That's the, the product I needed to know what the name of. It is um, Alcohol Ethyl... Ethyl... Ethyl Athlylate. All right, cool. Thank you. Awesome. I will. Uh, I will chase that down, and I will tidy up my miniature that I put primer on that needs cleaning up. So back to talking about the success of a, an episodic story. Now, Vox Machina has only been doing it for a very short period of time. Marvel has been doing it for ages, and the comic books started to lose their flair because the writers had been everywhere. So they've been doing a story for key figures for years and a comic book would come out every week or every month and they've been doing that for years eventually they run out of stories to tell like all things you can you, and then they start doing something different because they don't want to see the same story people want a different story right this is where i think it becomes problematic there is a point where a story storyline needs to come to an end and you need to let go of a franchise and say, okay, we done, we've done what we can with this. Let's let it be. Let's just put it aside and move on to something new. But of course, uh, something that's designed to make money, you don't want to do that. You want a franchise that goes on forever. And, uh, you know, because the last one made money, so the next one should make money as well. Because, you know... Everybody wants to duplicate what um, George Lucas did, which is make a series, whether it be a Dungeons and Dragons cartoon, or uh, a, a Western, or uh, Marvel movies, or DC movies, or whatever it is. They want something that's a franchise that can go on indefinitely. But stories can't work that way. And I would say this is very much like your Dungeons and Dragons campaign. There's a point where it starts getting stale, and it's time to move on and let it be. So even if Captain Marvel isn't the beginning of um, sort of a downturn in the popularity in, in Marvel movies, it's going to happen because they are going to use up all of the content that they had and people are going to kind of get sick of it and they're going to want to look for something else. Do we remember when there was, a, there was a, you know, you couldn't go wrong. There was a point where all you, could, all you needed to do was make a... Um, a movie about cowboys and it would do well and if you got the right actors they just they made money because that's what people wanted to see later on we had um, kung fu kung fu and karate you know that and we really haven't seen that because now every every movie and every character does kung fu and karate of some kind um, and so it's been blended into the to whatever current movie or action uh, movie we've got there we go I've got the mouths most, mostly covered. But there is a point where the audience is going to get sick. Just like your players will get sick and tired of your own campaign. So which is why a natural end is necessary. That's my view. Is you've got to have a natural ending to whatever you're trying to do. I also find it really interesting that... Um, do you remember how Marisha Ray, poor Marisha Ray used to get such a slagging about um, uh, Keyleth. Is it Keyleth? I think it's Keyleth. God, I've forgotten the name, um, name of the character she plays. Keyleth, the, the Druid. About, you know, how she played the character, the decisions that she made. And it's like, 
this is this is just make believe. I don't. So why do people get so caught up into those sorts of things? Because it's like anything. Because they can have an opportunity to have a say, and because social media and um, the view of everybody is so dramatic you know, and so varied, things like these wind up playing far greater importance than they needed to be. Okay, so what am I using right now? I'm using, uh, is it uh, Cabon Crimson? This is a red color, a really dark, deep red color. I'm going to try to get it on the tongue. I don't know how successful that's going to be, but I'm going to give it a go. Um, Kiki, Aaron, Kiki, yes, that's the one, Kiki. Keyleth. But now, when it comes to Marisha Ray and her character, people love love the character. And to be fair, I was watching um, uh, Marisha Ray play, uh, uh, is it a, ra a raccoon? In Sam Regal's one shot, something about pandas. And I was laughing my head off. It was so funny. Is this a product of a dungeon master? Now here's the thing. This is a dungeon. Sam obviously didn't prepare a lot of material. And he was playing it. You could tell he was playing it off the cuff. He was just going with the flow. And um, I, I thought that was really, really cool. But isn't it interesting how the view of Marisha Ray and Keyleth has changed? Now, it's a very different view of Marisha Ray and Keyleth. And yet she started off playing a character that nobody really liked. And you're, I know what you're thinking, um, people. I know, Fred, what is, what is your point? My point is, it is possible to start off with a character, whether it be male or female, and not like that character, and given enough time, start to grow and get attached to that character. And as soon as the likes of um, things started to go wrong for... Uh, Keyleth and Vox Machina, uh, that's, and, and they had to sort of pull themselves together, pull themselves together as a group, that's when people really started to care about what was going to happen next. And the new campaign, a lot of people didn't like the new campaign. They weren't, you know, because the characters weren't sort of meshed together. Now that they are, it's working a lot better. Things have gone wrong for them. Um, there's been character death which was, you know, hugely sort of dramatic at, at one point. People were like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. Why would, why would, why would Matt do that so early on? Kill a character so early on? And I was like, well, it's Dungeons and Dragons. So, yes. I would just like to point out, whether it be Keyleth from Vox Machina, or it be Captain Marvel from the Marvel Universe, or it be your own campaign, chances are that what you're dealing with is a, a build up to something greater and um, you know conflict comes with uh, time you need to build that basis up and you need to get people attached and uh, sometimes um, when you think about characters that you get attached to it doesn't happen straight away so give it time uh, Darren can't stick around tonight, Fred. Have uh, dinner with friends. Hey, mate, Darren, no problems. You see you later. Hi, Daryl. Hi, Fred. I'm curious. What do you think will be the next movie genre Hollywood will uh, chase after superhero films no longer are profitable? Do you know, I think they're going to be fantasy. I know what you're thinking, Fred. Are you, are you saying that Dungeons & Dragons will be the next um, big craze after... Um, Marvel movies and superhero movies. Yeah, I do actually. I think they will very much be what people are interested in. I'm going with the Dungeons and Dragons army painter Otiog Brown now. I'm going to try and just brush that over with my dry brush um, tool and see how well that works. I don't know how well it'll work. I, mean, I, you know, I just try stuff and see if it works. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But there is a good, uh, you know, there's a, it's a good example of, um, it's been building up for years. When you think about movies and stories, you know, um, gangsters, uh, there was a time when gangster movies were all the craze. You know, you couldn't go wrong, make a gangster movie, cool. Cop movies um, and stories, 
all the craze. But I honestly think that we are seeing uh, the development of something slightly different to all of that, which is we're going to start seeing fantasy taking a stronger focus. Now, you could say, well, yeah, but it had its time with the likes of Lord of the Rings. That wasn't really a time, you know. Um, there's, there's always been attempts to make movies like that throughout history of film, but they've never been hugely successful apart from Lord of the Rings. So that it never had its time. I feel like it will have its time. It is coming. It will be. It'll, it's around the corner. It's not too far away. Uh, Aaron, I'm actually excited about the Wheel of Time TV series. You'll have explain to me a little bit more about the Wheel of Time. I don't know too much about it. So Game of Thrones is a TV series. Can you imagine what will happen if they decide to make a movie? No, I'm serious. What happens if they decide to make a movie on uh, the Game of um, Thrones series? Hugely appealing to a particular type of audience. But it's the next most natural um, progression. Because you can make a lot of money on a TV series, but you can make a lot of mo money off movies as well. And I know a lot of people are saying, well, right now, Fred, you know, the truth is that box office takes are, you know, not that great. And a lot of people are watching DVDs. But see, that's the thing. Is you don't necessarily have to make your money in the box office at the theatre. You can make your box, of, um, box office or your revenue from video and DVD release. A lot of movies have done hugely well after they were released at the theatres years later and become cult movies and made truckloads of movie um, money based off their, um, their, their production costs. And uh, it is entirely possible the same thing will happen with the likes of um, uh, a, new, a new genre of movies which are fantasy based. That's just my view. I think it's entirely possible that's where we could wind up being. All right, I'm putting this stuff on. It's just, it's just a matter of trying to get just enough but not too much. And it's not so easy sometimes, I have to say. Just paint on the, I'll go on the underneath. Probably don't need to worry so much about the underneath. So I will just attack the underneath with my big dry brush. My dry brush is working its way in. Um, it's a 14 book series. Holy Toledo. Well, at least it's not a, um, a comic book that's been going for years. But 14 books, that's a lot. So that if it works out well, it could wind up being, what, 14 um, seasons? Or if they decide to keep going after they've they've done done the, uh, the books and, and, and make more. So here, here's the thing. Is, has anybody noticed Harry Potter did really well? And then Fantastic Beasts did really well. All fantasy. All fantasy. And I still think that Dungeons and Dragons will have its time in the fantasy um, genre. And it's going to come down to having a the kind of background of storytelling um, that's episodic. Because a lot of cowboy uh, movies were based off um, books. Books that were put out. Whether it be The Lone Ranger or anything like that. So I think the same thing will apply when it comes to um, Vox Machina. That's why I think that um, if they get their TV series off the ground well, that it, it will probably um, spawn a movie. And not just, um, not just a, a cartoon. I think they, they, they might find themselves in a situation where they find, they find somebody approaching them and saying, look, we're, we're, we're interested in turning this into a full-fledged um, movie. And why would you say no to that? You don't. You don't say no to it. You just take it and say, all right, I appreciate that. That's wonderful. Can I have some uh, artistic um, uh, uh, input into it? That'd really be about it, right? Um, Aaron, I'm not sure how you would fit a book in one season. They're like, um, one, 1,000 pages each. Yeah, but then how, how would you fit, um, The Hobbit into three movies? <laughs> uh, 
and to a large extent, uh, I mean, how do you fit the Lord of the Rings um, books into movies? Well, you make them three hours long and require people to go to the toilet numerous times between them because it's at least three hours long. Um, but, you know, still very hard to do. It can be done, I'm sure. It's not rocket science, right? They're not trying to go to the, um, to the moon or Mars. I know they're still trying to do that, but getting people there is a different story. And uh, I don't think it's likely to happen anytime soon. Kind of a shame. But yes, um, because Critical Role has got such a, a, a strong following and because they're, really, they're, they're all really good storytellers, that they are building up a, a body of work that is potentially capable of supporting a, a movie franchise. Which is why I think that the um, the cartoon idea is going to work out really well for them. Alright, I'm just going to just mix up a little bit more paint. I have to get myself um, out of here pretty shortly. Hi Mal, how's it going? How many people here contributed to the Vox Machina Kickstarter? I had to talk to my wife down from the 400 400 yeah look I saw it wasn't it crazy there was there was like the $10 $20 and then it went up and there's the $100 200 400 um, there was a thousand dollars there was five thousand there was ten thousand twenty five thousand dollar backing and I was like oh my gosh and I, I bet you somebody did it I am kind of curious if um, somebody um, backed that um, Kickstarter with a huge amount of money if your wife, Mel, had um, put down $400 on the Kickstarter, um, how difficult would life have been? <laughs> I kind of wonder if people are selling houses and cars or, you know, are, are people actually making that kind of money or are they... That's how crazy people are about Critical Role. And it's lovely. It really is. Which is why I'm serious when I say, you know, if their if their cartoon comes off, we we're looking at a movie. It'll happen. You know, who would have thought that they would ever ever be able to make um, superhero movies and be successful? Because what superhero movies never came off. They always were disasters, right? Never worked ever. And to be fair, I think it's when. Um, uh, Kevin gets removed from the equation that it will fall over um, and of course he's 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 had had so many successes and it's been so so successful now there's bound to be a time when there's a, a failure along the way and then somebody will be stupid enough to think that just because he had one failure and he was leading the ship that he needed to get rid of the um, the captain and move on to somebody else and that that'll be that'll be the day that uh, uh, Marvel Studios um, disappears and um, and then you'll watch Disney making uh, all sorts of wild decisions actually I'm considering doing a, um, doing it myself and surprising her with a bag I've been waiting for a good d d cartoon since like 1987 fair enough because a lot of us um, who were into Dungeons and Dragons even if we we, we, we kind of cringed at what we saw from the uh, the old Dungeons and Dragons cartoon, even though we might have cringed when we watched it at times, or a lot of the time, uh, we still enjoyed it because it was it was our hobby, and nothing funnier than watching um, Tarmet, uh, Queen of Dragons, uh, as their first encounter. It's like oh 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 that that's that's rough, and of course they run away, which is the most sensible thing. But you you know. You know what's going to happen. There's going to be somebody in your party, if you ever did that, that was like, oh, I'm going to fight her. <laughs> and then they'll get ex upset when their character dies. How could you possibly do that? <laughs> well, you're the one who rushed in. But yeah. So I am I'm honestly not surprised that it, it, is, uh, it has got the kind of turnout. Um, and they deserve it. And will it pave the right way for other people? Not really, unless there is a body of work that suggests um, good stories. 
and then you could say, well, you know, a lot of the the Dritz stories are really good, and they they could they can make a good, um, solid, uh, movie franchise out of that. I'm not sure that I am convinced. Um, I'm sure that there is a lot of people who would enjoy that. Whether it's going to work for mainstream is another story, because you're never too too sure what stories people like. All right, I am just about finished. I've done a bit of dry brushing on this character, uh, this monster, and I've talked a lot of bits and pieces. I've got my red mouth, which I feel like I need to sort of get a bit more red on there. It's a little bit on the dark side. And then. Anyway. I'm just going to clean off my brush, I'm going to put in one more coat on the tongue and I'm going to get myself organised, go have a shower before I go off and watch this movie, um, Captain Marvel and for those of you who are thinking of uh, joining the Legend of Vox Machina um, Kickstarter and so forth all the best, don't get yourself into, I'm um, hocked up into debt <laughs> and for those of you who are, who are uh, looking forward to the Artificer and uh, what it has to um, offer. Um, be gentle with your dungeon master and dungeon masters. Be gentle with yourself. Remember, it's all right to actually say, no, I don't want this in my game anymore. <laughs> or to say, yes, I do like it and I want to keep it in my game. Mel, um, has anybody here seen the game gamers, um, Dortmund's Rising? I know I have. Uh, they had a, They had two. Two sort of um, fan-made movies that they made, which are really funny. That's absolutely hilarious. Wonderful, wonderful stories out of them. Stuff that we can all sort of identify with. If you've played Dungeons & Dragons, you'll know what I'm talking about. Um, all right, so I had that dark red. I'm going to try putting that dark red on again, but no, actually I'm not. I'm going to go a lot lighter. If I go lighter, then it's easier to pick it up later on, I think rather than try to um, start with the dark red and then and move into a lighter and then I can go back if I need to. Uh, yep, I'm going to go with this. I'm going to use some of the Vallejo bright orange and then I'll go back to red. But yeah, they were really, really funny. But for um, a, a story to work, you've got to have a good body of um, work that people can identify with. It's funny though, eh? You know, um, Wonder Woman did really well. Um, Captain Marvel isn't doing so well, um, but it is, it's odd, and none of these characters is, are characters, none of these women are, you know, you could, uh, you know, identify with, you know, one made from clay and one who's a, uh, an army, uh, you know, an air force pilot, how many, how many people identify with any of those characters whatsoever? They need a, a superhero, um, if they want a female superhero who is identifiable, they need somebody who's a housewife, who just picks up the kids and uh, has to um, do all the other stuff uh, in between the shopping and so forth. Um, okay, so, it's a little bit heavy handed I realise. Just trying to get the tongue, tongue coated. Alright, that'll do. That'll do. Well, will it do? I don't know. I don't. Hi, Daryl. Fred, do you have um, do you have Netflix? No, I don't. I wasn't watching Netflix with my partner when I had a partner. I don't really watch it now. If so, have a look at um, Love, Death, and Robots um, out next week. I think is um is Love, Death, and Robots uh, based because there was a movie that came out many many years ago with um, Nicole Kidman and Matthew Broderick and it was sort of uh, styled around uh, all the wives being replaced with robots by the, um, the husbands which was a really sort of odd concept and uh, you know Uh, what's this? Um, it's it's hopefully a new direction in animation. Oh, okay, eighteen episodes produced by David Fincher. All different um, shorts. Oh, okay, all right. Is it a little bit like the uh, the Twilight Zone? 
I always enjoyed the Twilight Zone. They had some very interesting stories and different, particularly the old stuff. You just never knew what was what, what was going to happen next. Okay, I'm going to take off. Um, I've painted part of my miniature. It's it's not there. It's not finished, obviously. Um, but I'm going to um, head off, and uh, you guys look after yourselves. Don't do anything foolish like uh, I would. And um, yeah, if you found the video helpful or informative or just entertaining and just like hanging out with me, cool. Like the video. If you didn't think it was any good, then it's fine. That's what the thumbs down's for. Um, share the video with other people if you think they'd find it useful. I don't know that they necessarily will, but that's cool too. Subscribe if you like this sort of thing. I do this every week on my day off. So uh, yeah, you can hang out with me. Um, subscribe, hit the bell button to be notified, hopefully, by YouTube when I'm live and when I publish new videos. Not always the case though. Um, if you want to support my channel, uh, you did by watching this, and I have hundreds more videos, lots of uh, content you can check, whether it's Player or Dungeon Master, doesn't matter. Um, I don't do uh, Patreon, but I do have affiliate links to the Book Depository, uh, Book Depository, and Amazon, where you can buy stuff online. I get a small commission. You pay exactly the same price, and uh, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, very quickly. Now is the time. Um, just uh, give me your feedback. Say hi. Say bye in the live chat if you don't. Uh, if you're not part of the live chat, it's cool. That's what the comment section is all about. You can go and put your feedback down there. Uh, tell me about the Legends of Vox Machina. Are you excited? Are you not? Did you put in for the Kickstarter or not? Um, I don't necessarily need to know how much. You don't need to say that. That's private stuff, right? Private stuff. Um, tell me what you think about the new Dungeons & Dragons revised Artificer. And I will catch up with everybody next time. And thank you for hanging out with me. And um, yeah, till next time, keep rolling those 20s.